Well, <clears throat> since we are uh, recording this conversation uh, for people who might attend it already the exhibition, but some of them might encounter it uh, on our website without uh, seeing the exhibition prior. So I would briefly uh, introduce it and uh, then we can talk among each other. Uh, we are having a conversation today on the occasion of the exhibition uh, Reconstructing Life that is happening at the Institute of Contemporary Arts. Uh, at the moment, uh, going on until um, 5th of uh, June, 2021. Uh, an exhibition that features two artists, Alexander Shello and Kalin Serapionov. Um, Alexander Shello from uh, Cologne and uh, Kalin Serapionov from Sofia, uh, showing two uh, moving image works actually in the show. Um, and me curating the show. I will start with a brief uh, introduction of uh, what we meant uh, when we um, started thinking about the exhibition. Um, my initial idea somehow was to do a show, a ref reflection of the situation we encountered uh, uh, two years ago with the first lockdown, which was kind of a shock for everybody, I believe. And uh, to me, the major, uh, the major perception of that time was uh, this uh, deafening silence that uh, uh, suddenly uh, blocked all events and uh, basically canceled all public spaces. And we started living in this, um, in, our, in our private spaces only, in our bunkers, as I said, it, in the text for the exhibition. And, um, and yeah, then I encountered uh, then I encountered the the postings of uh, Alexander Shello uh, on Facebook, and then we were discussing it with Kalin and uh, with Pravdulup, with whom we are taking care for the exhibition program of uh, ICA, and and we came also to this work by Kalin who uh, reflects on the same. Um, uh, feelings on the same perceptions, actually. And uh, I started it in the text uh, with this um, metaphor uh, using um, a thesis that physicists um, uh, portray the, 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 the condition under which uh, one hypothetically uh, a person uh, traveling close to a black hole would uh, stretch time and space in, in, to, to such an extent that uh, uh, the perception of time and space would, uh, would disappear. Uh, and <clears throat> that, uh, to me, uh, was resembling more or less what, what happened to us uh, two years ago. Um, and uh, then to me, it, it was an interesting situation that because we are an artist and because we, uh, we, leave, we think and live more or less with images, uh, when this feed of images suddenly stopped and when we didn't have access to public spaces, uh, suddenly I was very surprised and very uh, fascinated to see in both your works, this um, this compensatory reaction, this uh, uh, artist practice who um, tries to restore places that are, uh, we don't have access at the moment to. Um, so, yeah, basically with this few metaphors, I tried to to, to describe what, what the show tries to, to figure to the, to the audience. And um, <clears throat> yeah, um, we can actually start uh, 
talking to each other from this point on. And um, I thought of starting, because both works are actually created uh, um, per public appearance uh, during the first lockdown on social media. Uh, specifically, I saw them on Facebook on different occasions. Uh, Alexander started post um, series of posts every day, um, each day posting a new short animation of his, uh, long series of animations actually done uh, uh, in years much long ago before we face this uh, situation, but um, yeah, this new situation gave a new overtone to, to the entire series, I believe. And then I, uh, then Kalin's work appeared on a campaign by Sariev Gallery based in Plovdiv, uh, which was trying to somehow uh, react uh, on the situation and to continue um, programming on uh, social media. So uh, because of this public appearance on social media, I would start with the question how, like first asking you, Alexander, what, what was the intention behind, what was the impulse behind that long campaign lasting four or five months, I believe? Yeah, it was quite a, uh, in fact, it was at the end to do it, it was quite a spontaneous decision. It was not, um, I mean, evidently, as you already said, the, the series was not um, produced or even conceptualized um, during the lockdown. But um, what is, it is completely true what you say uh, in my view that the lockdown it um, it gave to a lot of practices actually um, I see that also with, with my students it gave uh, uh, a completely different context um, in terms of what it means to share a practice what it means to coexist with the contribution of different practices and Ultimately, what you say, uh, the question of um, sort of uh, private and public space or public space suddenly as a form of uh, multiplicity of, of our private uh, spaces, our bunkers, our, you know, little bubbles in which we suddenly um, existed, um, this, this produced a, 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 a really, really different framework to, to look at those things. But the first, the first impulse for me, it really came from this experience that I also, again, that I face, especially with my students, because I was a lot in, in, in contact with them, of course, during this period, but only online, only like we are online now, by the way. I'm sorry from my side to be online again. It's almost ironic in the in terms of this show, but it, we can also say it quite fits. So. Um, but yeah, so we spent this time online. We were trying to share practices, even to still do something like collective processes, but it felt like a collective process under these conditions, it can only be a, a, a kind of parallelism of different practices that are shared or are proposed, but like a monologue almost. For me, this whole situation, it, it felt like, you know, there's still something like communication, but communication is a kind of multi-directional monologue system or something like this. And so I, I started to think about the, the needs that I felt in, on my own side also, that I felt sort of coming up through this thing you know where we, i think the most of us you said we were shocked it's true and there was first of all there was a kind of lack that we experienced i think which was the lack of to share space you know to be able to be in one room to have all the shared disturbances in this room the shared attention and so on 
And so I, for me, the question was, okay, what it felt like a huge miss, like a huge loss actually in this moment and also a kind of dangerous loss. And I thought like, okay, what can be, what can be a contribution in this logic? You know, how, how, how is it possible to abuse maybe also this systematic, this technicality, this, this apparatus we are sort of forced in to, um, in order to, to, to share something, you know, in order to, uh, and, and so this was suddenly I, I, this series came to me because I was actually quite a lot working on this series also during this time. It was almost a, a kind of therapeutical thing, you know, to think of like, oh, okay, you are kind of reconstructing from your memory places, situations that you can actually not live right now, you know, and so, so there was a kind of a way there is anyway, a kind of, of course, a kind of way of reenactment that is attached here that is also a form of realization of those spaces. And so the idea to post these things on, on, on Facebook and this to, to say, okay, but if this is the case, and if I feel this kind of um, uh, almost necessity to work on, on this re-realization of such situations and places, maybe this can be something in this logic, not to be really able to share, but to be able to propose it as a concrete materialization of those spaces, of, through practice, through memory practice, you know? And so it was funny that after or during the thing, I also, I got a lot of um, uh, responses from the different people who, who sort of, at, at first, I, you know, because it feels always like you are kind of blowing something somewhere, you know, and you there's no resonance, no real resonance in this moment. You know, that's also part of this experience that we also have now, I think, you know, I'm talking. And of course, if we would share one space, I would feel a kind of resonance like this. I, I see a screen with uh, different people whom I really like, but there's no, you know. So then there came emails and people responded bit by bit and they said like ah, okay yeah we are actually following this every day you know we're like there is this thing in in a kind of dailiness of putting this online that for some people was really interesting almost like a form of an anchor like a, a, a materialization of another practice that is not my practice you know that somehow steps into a, a an interaction that is not a real interaction <laughs> so it it was a bit this this game that suddenly was there. And for this series that, as you said, pre-existed, this was a completely new context because it was always for me a bit a question with this series, you know, how much is this a privatism? How much is this a thing that sort of circulates in itself, in oneself, and, you know, goes always back to oneself and so on. But suddenly this situation it was something where exactly this function became almost paradigmatic for any kind of communication, you know, this kind of looping back. And so, yeah, this, for me, it would be one answer on this is it's, it's, yes, it's a completely different context. And somehow this series that I continued and that I posted on a daily basis, then it, it became for me a tool in this game. Yeah, in this case, uh, there was also an interesting mi migration of the work itself that it was it was created not with the idea of being shown on the format of this social media. Then it was shown there and now we are showing it in an exhibition space in a completely different format. So I wonder how, how do you perceive uh, this migration, how, how does it change the, the work itself? Yeah, it's very interesting because in fact, I, I just, we know each other actually for quite a long time and we know each other almost since the time when I started this series actually, which is, what was it like 2005 or six or something like that, no, when we met the first time. And 
in fact, the, the interesting thing is that was the moment when I did show this series a few times in exhibitions. Uh, first time, I think, in Kunstmuseum Stuttgart, and then a few times in, in different contexts, uh, in a very, very different way than now, actually. And uh, as I described before, there was for me, it, it's interesting as a practice, and it was always important for me and kept being imp important for me as a practice, but there was a problem with this series in my view, in the form of a communication within an exhibition somehow, because there was this sort of circular thing that always happened. And that for me, it, it was not totally resolved in these, in these ways it was shown, you know, it was very regularly shown and so on. And, uh, and then there came this sort of COVID situation, but I had continued this series all those years um, because it was important within my own practice as a tool in fact, and, but I had not shown it anymore. I had, I had very few times I had shown it before and then I had decided to not show it for a long time actually. Um, and, uh, and then there came this sort of uh, um, series of postings on the social media and now the, the kind invitation, uh, thanks again. I think for me, it was a really beautiful idea to, to, to off, offer it. Uh, really beautiful frame offered by you also with your thoughts about this. Um, for me, it, it was it's quite interesting because that gives again an answer, but not on the series, but on the series in how it appeared during the lockdown on this social media, which changes for me totally what it means to show this as an exhibition, you know. And then, in fact, the decision that you proposed to have this kind of cloud of appearance and the kind of coexistence of the post, let's say, that, of course, online they appeared day by day and you could scroll down and whatever, but it was really this line of, of appearances. And I find very interesting this idea now to say, okay, there is this kind of cloud and it's important. I, I think not everybody who sees this maybe has seen the show, but it's quite important for those sequences that there's these black screens in between because these black screens, they have, for me, they have a double function. One function is that they sort of allow when you watch these sequences repeating to sort of recode your own brain so to speak you know when you when you watch them so it's like almost you you keep seeing the sequence but you you adjust your own system again so that you can restart new but they also they are like entrance doors so because they kind of break those sequences they also allow you to navigate in a kind of crossway to other sequences so to build a kind of narrative out of these sequences where you can say they are not narrative in a certain sense they are but in a certain sense they are not because they are really moments in time so they are really what we call in german augenblick you know like a thing that lasts for three seconds or four seconds or something like that and that sort of contains an undividable sort of bubble of time so to speak you know that that was for me the starting point for this series somehow and these black sequences, they allow, if you want, so to jump from bubble to bubble to bubble. And so in this logic of the cloud, I think that the rhythmicality that happens there, it's, it might, but now after having said all this, I have to say that I have not seen physically the exhibition also. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the weird part of, of this, that because of COVID once more, I could not come. And I think this is interesting if we talk about it now, but it's also quite sad, of course, because I'm speaking speculative now. Huh? I'm speaking like how I imagine that it looks, obviously. But uh, yeah, this at this point, I would like to ask Kalin. Um, how was his situation? I to this point, I I was forget keep forgetting to ask uh, whether the work the work existed before the invitation by Sirif Gallery. And to show it in the social media campaign by the Gary was a good occasion to show the work or the work was specifically created for that campaign and having in mind the frame of social media, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, no, actually uh, the work, the work uh, didn't exist before. 
uh, before the project. It was especially created uh, for uh, Saria self isolation project, uh, which was actually last year, which started last year because of the lockdown. Uh, and uh, for me, it was very interesting because uh, this project was uh, this project was one of the first which somehow reacted to to this uh, sort of totally new situation. And uh, they sent the invitations or just the letters, not really invitations to to some artists and uh, with, with the, this very simple question, how, how are you? How do you feel? Even not asking for a work which is you know, connected um, to the, you know, the, 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 the certain moment, just a simple question, how are you? And in case if you, if you need something to share with us, with me, um, um, uh, with, uh, with, with, uh, with the public, you know, uh, they you you can do it i mean the artist can can, can do it and uh, uh it was um, uh, for me it was a very good opportunity to to start thinking uh, and somehow to try to escape from from the bunker as you said in in, in the uh, in the first uh, first question uh, because uh, for me the isol isolation was uh, i would not say that it was really painful but i think that um, the the my artistic language is very much connected with um, with the communication and uh, and uh, the things that I can see uh, constantly. And you know, being in this status of isolation actually is uh, it makes me uh, not able to uh, to receive uh, information. Uh, and I, I wanted somehow to react, and uh, I invented this um, this simple method uh, uh, just because um, I think that one of the habits that we have is, uh, you know, this way of reading, this method's way of reading and way of, of listening. So I, I, I wanted to, to work with, with these two things, which you can actually do it everywhere, let's say. Um, yeah, that was a sort of input uh, which was set by the by the the city of gallery and especially the project uh, city of self isolation. Then I proposed them um, this idea of uh, working with no visual image and somehow using the the tools which I have around my desk, uh, which means that instead of computer and the internet, which was the only way of uh, getting the information and communicating with people. I have around uh, you know, these A4 papers, uh, pencils, uh, you know, uh, sound recorder. Even I didn't want to touch my video camera because uh, I know everything in the house and it was not really <laughs> interesting for me. Uh, so this is, this is uh, how, I, how I started. And the work is especially done uh, for the social media because that was the, frame, the framework of the project. Uh, that the artists have the opportunity to uh, to present the work to be the works to be presented on the um, social media channels of of the gallery, which means Instagram and Facebook. So I had to to think. I mean, we had to think, and I especially with this project of something which will be on that device, or whenever like a smartphone, and. Um, you know this kind of a decreasing the 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 frame uh, as I was working before with the sort of big big video projections or or videos for uh, for monitors. You know now I now I had to to deal with uh, with with this specific task, which is also um, for me was was difficult. And then uh, the most important thing was that uh, to create a work which uh, is actually catchy or notable, you know, for for being in a social media, as in order to not to falling down in this huge amount of uh, uh, images that come um, circulating constantly. You know. Interesting, interesting. When you when you are showing your phone now, uh, now I realize that maybe the portrait format of the work. Well, it comes because it is a portrait of people, but maybe it comes also with the portrait format of the phone. I don't no, know. It's, it, it started first from, from the portrait format of the phone, honestly. Uh, yeah. And I, I was, even at that time, I was thinking somehow 
uh, because I have a monitor surround and uh, even to if I turn the, a, a, a simple TV set vertically, you know, that could also exist in a, in a physical space. Uh, but first, the first initial idea was, was that I'm doing this for the, uh, for the phone and I was starting researching uh, what exactly should be the image size because, you know, different phones has a, uh, you know, a different image size and then uh, it was uh, something like a miracle for me because every time when I somehow change the ratio uh, and I receive something which not exactly fit on my, my model. Um, and then uh, suddenly I decided, okay, I will do it in a, in a, uh, in a, in a most, um, uh, how to say, yeah, we, in the way like using the 16 to nine, but just turn it vertically. Uh, so that was the, the editing background uh, on the timeline. And then I, I started to adapt the words after I having the, the sound be, being recorded from doing the drawings. Uh, I started to adapt the words uh, according to, to, to the, this vertical, vertical format of the phone, which also somehow matched the phone of the TV set because 16 to 9 works both on the, TV, on the phone and, and on, on, the, on the TV set. I would probably ask the same thing I asked Alexander, how then after social, after the presence of the work on social media, how do you, how do you feel about its display now in the gallery, which is totally different, I mean, which is, which has this materiality in it, uh, uh, with this heavy material presence of the two large monitors placed on the, on the floor. Well, when you work for, uh, for example, especially with this work, uh, I, I have to say maybe for the people who will not see the exhibition that this is, this is actually a portrait without, without image. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm recording the sound, then I manipulate the sound of a simple drawing, drawing which I, uh, I'm doing all, uh, on the people with whom I was talking about uh, using Zoom or Skype, you know, online, and then I try in, 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 the, in the evening, let's say, I, I was trying to remember how they look like and what I have seen, you know, on the screen of my computer and, uh, and did the simple drawings with a, with a pen and pencil on the, on the A4 uh, paper, white paper, uh, for, a, for about one or two minutes, not more, just, just very, very uh, fast, simple drawing. Uh, trying to catch uh, the specific character, how they look like, uh, uh, something which, uh, which, for example, I have realized it's important. Uh, uh, and uh, I, record, I recorded this sound uh, uh, from, from, from the pen and from, or from the pencil, uh, the sound which touch the paper. And uh, then um, I, I was trying to describe, you know, these faces, let's say, uh, with, with some words which can help the, the visitor to, uh, to find, uh, to find the, um, it, it's, it's all, uh, their own um, idea of, of, of the image. So it's a sort of fiction. I, I created a sort of fiction. And um, moving from uh, and, uh, uh, creating this for, a, for, a, for a social media, I was thinking for uh, some really important things. Uh, first is the duration that I mentioned before, uh, which should be, I mean, not, not, not more than two, three minutes. And then, uh, you know, the idea of uh, this, this piece to be notable, you know, uh, I didn't want to have some very powerful visual image, which were very, mm -hmm, uh, well, we, we knew that from, from before, uh, like a spectacular or something which is really, really very uh, catchy, but, but much more to, 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 to make this balance between the sort of uh, psychological level, you know, and also something which, which is totally different than uh, these uh, waves of, of, of visual image that we, we, uh, we, we have on, on the feeds. Uh, and I did a, a kind of a, a equality, you know, each uh, drawing was um, with the same, um, the same design, sort of, you know, white background with uh, black letters. Uh, and then uh, when we, 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 we started discussing about the, the show in the physical space, um, I was 
checking here all, all the things and suddenly I realized that in the physical space, I need, uh, I need uh, something which should have a much more of volume. You know, I mean volume as, a, as a something which also to be a, a kind of a sculpture or, or object. And, and, and the way of uh, having these big monitors, uh, 20, 55 inches, uh, installed vertically, you know, on the floor in the space, I, I was really uh, was really good for me because uh, mm, uh, it somehow separate the work from the this sort of uh, uh, you know virtual virtual part and and put it in in, in, in uh, to to have its own life in the physical space. In here, I I definitely needed something to to be more in terms of. Uh, mm, uh, of having some sort of, uh, of uh, identity of each each sort of portrait, which means that I changed somehow uh, the design of, of of the of the image and adding uh, a different fonts and also colors. So now not everything is on a white surface. I have some some drawings with the black surface with uh, green or or, or pink uh, magenta letters and uh, I have also uh, the original one with uh, white surface and, and, and black letters but with different uh, uh, font type uh, because uh, mm, visually for me uh, was a, a bit boring to have this kind of equality anymore you know in, in, in the in, in the physical physical object so that was the, the, the change actually and the other one was uh, for uh, the social media, when you work with the sound, uh, you know it should be mixed for uh, you know in a specific way. And then here in the in the space, uh, the sound is with the uh, headphones, uh, and um, the sound designer with whom I, I'm working, uh, he proposed me to somehow to also to to make a much more volume, you know, in in the in the um, how to say like a reverberation in, 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 in the sound environment, you know. Uh, so this is, uh, this is important when you migrate from it, for example, from a, a social media to the, to the physical space. <clears throat> Maybe this is the point, Alexander, you can briefly describe what the entire series of animations uh, consists of for, again, for the, for someone who, uh, encounters this conversation without seeing the exhibition. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can try, of course. Um, so first, it's um, this series is, a, as we described before, it's a practice. So it's um, a series, an open series um, of very short animations uh, drawn frame by frame by frame. Uh, if I say very short, I really mean very short. It's like, uh, it's, uh, it started with a quite rigid three second um, duration. Now it's not as rigid anymore. You will see if you see the sequences on the, um, that have been posted on, on, the, uh, on the platform. But um, uh, still it, it, uh, the, the logic of the sequence is the, the sort of, um, the undividability, if you want so, of time. So to say it's short in a sense that it relates to a shortest possible memory sequence or memory span, um, which we could call a form of present. So it's not a still image, but it's also in a radical sense, it's also not, that's why I said before, it's not a narration, you know, in a certain sense, at least. It's like a nucleus of time. It's a very short sequence that one happens to remember in its entirety, almost like you would remember an image. And it, this series, it, a still image, and this series, it came from, in fact, the other way around, from a series I was working on uh, that uh, had been um, memory, memory reconstructions by drawing from sort of daily um, visual perception, like, you know, you're walking in the street and you see some people at the traffic light or whatever. And then later on, you sort of try with a specific system of drawing. I try to sort of return 
to this moment, but not sort of internally visualizing a scene and then drawing the scene, but really to use the, the technicality of drawing the dot, the materiality of the drawing, sort of read out a visual memory, so to speak. So this idea is to, the drawing is not a tool of representation of a pre-existing memory, but it's actually the sort of entrance point into a form of less conscious um, uh, memory, visual memory. Um, that I say visual memory, but the visuality of it, it sort of uh, breaks down, of course, a, a much more complex form of memory that is not purely visual, but it, in, it uh, integrates acoustics and uh, um, temperature feelings and whatever. So, okay, this is a practice I came from with a still image. And then I noticed that in fact, what I remember if I, if I sharply focus it, it's very rarely a still image. It's almost in all cases, a very short sequence of time, you know, a very short sequence of duration, precisely uh, with Bergson more duration than time because time is still something dividable, but duration is really the opposite of space, so to speak. And this is something you can, inhabit as a form of memory of a presence, you know, of a present moment. Um, and so, in fact, that was the, the sort of birth moment of this series when I started to think, ah, how can I actually address these very sort of in themselves undividable short sequences? And then I thought, like, I, if I want to address them through the same technique that I do with uh, with the single drawing, which was my intention at this moment, then I have to basically go frame by frame by frame. So each sequence in these first sequences of the 36 images, like it was about three seconds, seconds were always about 36 images. Now, as I said, the duration might uh, vary a bit, but it's around this, let's say. Sometimes it's a bit shorter, sometimes it's a bit longer. Um, it's roughly a sequence of 12 frames per second, which also leaves a certain coexistence of the single image, the single frame and the sequence. It feels like, I mean, it's always difficult to describe if somebody has not seen it and we are describing it for somebody who has not seen it, but um, it, it always feels for me a bit like the image is not constructing on the screen, it's actually constructing in your head, you know, it's like, well, we know that that's anyway the case, but it's very much performing this, in fact, it's very much emphasizing this effect of, okay, the what is on the screen, it only gives a kind of trigger in order to construct something in your head, which also leads to this relative uh, naturalism or realism of them because there's aspects of them that is very precise and other aspects that are less precise but the image that appears in your own head when you look at them is extremely realistic it seems extremely realistic you know and that's interesting because nobody can say whether this kind of realism corresponds to the actual realism of a situation that was perceived or whether it's a kind of, like Kalin said, a kind of fiction, a fictionalization of this into another form of something that realizes, but in our head, you know? So, okay, I, I stop here. <laughs> I don't want to, but it's, it's, this kind of, it's this kind of game, let's say, and through this, it's a practice. It's a daily practice. I'm drawing every single day, not every day on this series, but, very regularly also on this series and this kind of memory reconstruction practice, it also works through the fact of a day by day by day thing, which also means that in fact, for me, it's, it's quite interesting because a lot of people ask me, you know, is it like this practice? Is it like a home base, you know, because also I was traveling so much before COVID, <laughs> you know? And, um, and I always said, yes, it's like a space to inhabit these little durations that you construct and this kind of memory practice, it feels like a space to inhabit. That's also another dimension of what it means to, to say, okay, during this crisis, then maybe you can share this. It's, it's like a form of duration that you can inhabit if you cannot co-inhabit a space, you know, <laughs> in a sense.
uh, it's very interesting for me the you know this method uh, the, of, of doing drawings as you just said that you do this every day every day and every day uh, and both work somehow works with 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 uh, with the drawing without this to be seen you know on, on the screen and mm -hmm. uh, me uh, I mean um, I don't do it every day but I just uh, you know working on this work I just rem I remember that uh, uh, something uh, which uh, I started doing when I started, you know, um, at, at school, at art school, and or then later in the art academy, you know, this first very classical uh, sort of uh, way of uh, just doing these sketches, you know, these fast drawings. And I remember when I was a very, very young, we went, uh, we were uh, usually uh, were going uh, on the railway station or some places where people are just sitting there on park or something and try to do this on the you know white white sheet of paper and this is uh, this is somehow the um, the way of, of creating these skills you know skills which uh, uh, a routine routine uh, actions and then later you know after let's say 20 years or even more i mean uh, it's very simple that uh, your uh, way of thinking is somehow connected with with these lines or with in your case with your dots or or you know with the method. Uh, so for me, this, this, this is also interesting, you know, in, in, in kind of relations uh, with, with the both, both works. <clears throat> in fact, I think what for me is also interesting with the with this relation that you mentioned and with also the, the way you, you transfer, you know, the drawing into something that is actually not visible anymore as a trace, but only as a kind of ghost in between these, these yeah. uh, you know, points of reference. I think this is very, in fact, it's very related to, to how I would describe if we talk about this kind of internalization of a practice into one's body. It's like if it's, you know, almost a kind of physical absorb, absorption, absorption of, the, of uh, you know, the drawing itself. And then what you can share or what is transferred is, of course, not the drawing itself. It's exactly what you say. I think it's like... The drawing itself it doesn't exist the drawing yeah, is yeah. a kind of trigger and in fact what you perceive the experience that you have it exists in between all those missed sort of hints you know that's yeah. why i say it's like a ghost you know it's like something yeah, yeah. that appears without being materially existent i guess and i think this is a very strong reference also between the link between the two works huh? because you exactly yeah. articulate that i believe yeah? Absolutely. You touch, uh, you touch on my uh, on very much on my um, realization after I saw the show that I I see this paradoxical movement in both works that both are going out in the world to find a reason to practice uh, whether you you portray a person or whether you uh, picture. Uh, uh, a scene uh, from from the urban landscape, uh, but at the same time, the subject that uh, is in focus is is not important. I mean, we neither see real portraits of people, uh, nor we understand very much the scenes that are uh, drawn in the in the animation. So, so actually, the the the, the important thing is this internalization. So this, this movement is going out to, to come in, to, 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 to get insight into this self-reflective uh, uh, gesture that is uh, focused on the practice itself, on, on questioning what, what is this that an artist does and, and on the process itself. Oh, well, uh... It's not. It's not for the first time that I'm doing this kind of uh, movement from in and out, and you know, in and out. Uh, but especially for this work, um, it's a, it was a sort of intuition. Maybe I didn't think for this in, in the very beginning, but now I realize that uh, um, this is maybe because uh, the isolation actually does not allow us to communicate, and uh, also uh, and. Uh, uh, we 
could not uh, accumulate impressions um, that can become topics later. Uh, so uh, it is much more about, uh, you know, acting uh, for being here, uh, especially in my case. And in fact, uh, this, this self-reflection reflection helped me to, um, to separate from this feeling of, um, I don't know, disappearance or vanishing, uh, you know, maybe. Uh, and to, to transfer or, or share this uh, with the viewer. Uh, so, mm, uh, specifically, you know, the meaning of my work is uh, somehow hidden in, in this uh, um, uh, transition from, from uh, the outside to the inside, outside and from inside to the outside. Um, so I found this approach more interesting than this direct uh, visualization, and this is why I maybe, you know, as I said in the beginning, uh, intuitively uh, just went to to this uh, to this uh, a process uh, of creating. <clears throat> I um, I think you touch quite a neuralgic point somehow in the sense of. Well, it's a bit what I what I referred to before. This kind of um, um, I don't know anxiety. You know, like a, a form of of question towards this practice from myself that um, was and to a certain degree is. You know, like what what is it at the end? You know, are you abusing yourself to talk about the world, or are you abusing the world to talk about yourself? There is this kind of there is a weird um antinomy that you cannot really dissolve and um that that can end up i think could end up with a form of pure privatism and i think i mean personally i would find that quite problematic to be honest and it's a form i think this kind of privatism is also something that we that we were you know, almost materially facing during the lockdown, I think, because we were forced in this kind of privatism. It's, I think it's close to what you describe as a form of vanishing, Kalin, for me. Yeah. It's like this kind of, it's, it's a circuit, suddenly you are in this kind of circular system. You are in a, in a kind of feedback response permanently to yourself, even when you talk to people somehow. And, uh, and I think that for me, it's it's precisely this this change of context that happens through the lockdown, where suddenly I saw a place, you know, for these kind of practices. I, personally, I, for me, suddenly the, it 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 changes just a little bit in what this is, in fact, you know, where I would always have said, of, of course, for me, it's not just about an inside circulation, you know, my image that I. You know, send you. Why should you be interested in my memory image? You know, there's no, no real reason for that. It's it's more that this image can become a, a, a sort of trigger for a shared inhabited duration of time. You know, that is then your experience. It's not mine anymore. Obviously, when you and. This is a form of, of, of communication and the form, I think, of talking about a world um, at the end and not just about oneself, you know, in, in a sense. And for me, this it stays in this kind of ping pong and it, in this feedback antinomic system, but it uh, the, the, the lockdown was precisely the moment for me. And I think that in the exhibition, it's very beautifully articulated with the with the cloud and also actually with the dialogue with your, your work, Karin, um, where this, this becomes for me more clear than it has been, at least to myself in the past with this kind of practice, you know? We change, like I can also bring another example, like for example, the, I was working a bit recently with uh, people from the center of the less good idea for the less good idea. Sorry, it's a Kentridge Center in Johannesburg, a research center, and they launched a series uh, also during the lockdown that they called the Long Minute series, and it was about this idea of um, 
of uh, inviting practitioners from all over the world to sort of share one minute of practice. And sharing is the, is the crucial word here. What, what does it mean to share a, a moment of practice? I would always have said, you know, I cannot share my drawing practice because that's something very intimate, a kind of self dialogue that happens, you know, every morning, couple of hours, whatever. But in this lockdown situation, I think they open a window where we could say, yeah, this kind of coexistence that we can create within the co experience of one thing that we propose. That's a real form of communication suddenly, you know, more than the other stuff that we are doing daily, or me at least, when I'm, you know, talking with students endlessly on Zoom or whatever, you know. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, this is, this is absolutely, yeah. So thanks, Krasimir, for the, for the nice, beautiful frame that you give uh, for this, uh, in fact, uh, I think it's very it's very interesting to yeah, yeah. because oh. we we did sorry no no it's gone no because i think we did it but we of course we created this as a very direct reaction i think what we did but i think the the of course the idea to put this back into a frame of an exhibition it's also like taking a step back and trying uh, uh, with a with a different form of distance you know with a different form of uh, of reflection maybe of what this is or what it can be um, no i thank you both that uh, you helped me somehow to also realize what we are going through and uh, and uh, what, what you just described, both of you, was also super important and something that I didn't realize uh, so far, that this movement outside and then inside actually is pointing to, uh, to, this, to this virtuality of the image, that, that it actually doesn't belong to the author, doesn't belong to, to, to the subject being portrayed, but it belongs to the viewer and belongs to everyone who has a perception of, of this image. So I sorry. think it, it's a, it, this is a thing, thing that you just said. It's a, it is important that uh, for me that both works actually had, had uh, their own life somehow firstly in the, in the social media. Uh, maybe this somehow helps for uh, for um, yeah, for this thing. <clears throat> yeah, it's also know. interesting. Sorry. Uh, yeah, th this is this is my feelings. Like uh, I would imagine if I uh, actually I don't know, but if I would wouldn't create this work in the beginning for a social media, maybe it couldn't it couldn't be in the same you know, level or layer of, um, of uh, content now, you know. Maybe this is important uh, that from one side, you have this sort of uh, impossibility to, to communicate, which is actually, you know, the, the, the own bubble, you know, the bunker, you know, the isolation. But from other side, it somehow give you another opportunity to extend, you know, and this sort of flexibility of the art, which uh, I really like because uh, mm, it's not it's not about question of how, about adaptation. It's it's much more question about uh, uh, to find a way to to be seen. You know. No, I agree, and it's it's funny with what you just said, Krasimir, uh, and what you answered, Kalin. It's also we can say that maybe those works they are also they give a bit of a a particular interpretation of what could be social media, you know, in a funny sense. I mean, it's, it's also, it plays almost with this, with this word that is something that is, I mean, highly questionable in the political sense and so on. What is this, you know, social media, you know, we all know about the politics of Facebook and so on. We don't really agree to it evidently. And there's like a lot that we would criticize. But in, so, in some way, you could also interpret these works as an, an, a, a possible answer to, to this term of 
you know, social media in a way, even when it appears in an exhibition. Also, it's interesting that it, it has this kind of context that it brings yeah. with itself, maybe. I don't know, but it's just true, a sad, yeah, true, yeah. sad remark, but yeah. Anyway, Super. thanks, Krasimir, for that a lot. <laughs> and that's a great remark. I, I would call it a social medium. Because... Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> we can write a dissertation about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> Super, thank you both. Um, it's been already uh, an hour since we started this talk, and uh, I guess it's time to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you too for uh, that you put us in this interesting conversation and uh, especially for, for the show. It's really a great experience. Big although, I feel, although I feel somehow home and uh, in my sort of own, let's say, space or uh, space which I really know, uh, I, I was somehow trying to not to be very active in the in the terms of preparation and uh, to to be more as a as you know coming from outside. Let's say <laughs> maybe it's also help for the for the for the for the concept and for the installation. Uh, uh, thank you too general, very much. In general, it, I think it's it's a very good result, and I'm really glad that uh, I'm I'm taking part of it. Yes, thank you too very much for for it for your generosity and also uh, um, I mean there's just one thing I really really hope is to visit you guys soon uh, physically. Um, yeah, I mean I will I guess even if this is over then I will try to get an opportunity to to come by and so we can have a we can properly share a physical space at yeah. the end and have a beer together or something. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> after all without delay, without uh, too much medium, social medium, maybe. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yes. Super. Great. Thanks, Krasimir. Yeah.